Now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by the sun of York, and all the clouds that lowered upon our house in the deep bosom of the ocean buried. Now are our brows bound with victorious wreaths, our bruised arms hung up for monuments, our stern alarums changed to merry meetings, our dreadful marches to delightful measures. Grim visaged war hath smoothed his wrinkled front, and now, instead of mounting barbed steeds to fright the souls of fearful adversaries, he capers nimbly in a lady's chamber to the lascivious pleasing of a lute. But I, that am not shaped for such sportive tricks, nor made to court such an amorous looking glass, I that am rudely stamped, and want love's majesty to strut before a wanton ambling nymph. I that am curtailed by this fair proportion, cheated of feature by dissembling nature, deformed, unfinished, sent before my time into this breathing world, scarce made up, and that so lamely and unfashionable the dogs bark at me as I halt by them. Why, I, in this weak piping of time of peace, have no delight to pass away the time, unless to see my shadow in the sun, and descent on mine own deformity. And therefore, since I cannot prove a lover, to entertain these fair, well-spoken days, I am determined to prove a villain, and hate the idle pleasures of these days. Plots have I laid, inductions dangerous, by drug prophecies, libels, and dreams, to set my brother Clarence and the king in deadly hate, the one against the other. And if King Edward be as true and just as I am subtle, false, and treacherous, this day should Clarence closely be mewed up about a prophecy which says that G of Edward's heirs the murderer shall be. Die of thoughts down to my soul, ere Clarence comes.